When it comes to lost media and what I choose to cover on the channel, one area of content I have gone out of my way to avoid is the kind of stuff you'd find on YouTube, or otherwise known as internet lost media. I am not really sure why I found this category so uninteresting for all these years, but I think part of it comes down to the fact that I've never really had a deep attachment to any YouTube or internet related lost media. Sure, there are channels I love watching and websites from the old days that don't exist in quite the same way anymore, but none of it is lost in a large or meaningful way and it's too hard for me to get into other internet lost media that people request I look into. But as I started thinking more about this category as a whole, I realized I did have a few personal mysteries that I've tried looking for over the years and never really found, which might make for an interesting spin on the more popular topics that other channels have covered by now. Not only that, but this will be a really nostalgic look for me at what my interests were back then, and how fun the content I've lost over the years really used to be. Maybe you'll find some of yourself in these topics as well. So with that said, let's take a look at some lost media from YouTube that I've personally watched and come across. Starting things off takes us to the music side of YouTube which is still quite a beast if you go down the right rabbit holes. But back in the day, when things were less regulated, it was like discovering a new planet. My first big adventures into YouTube music uploads were around the early 2010s, when I was in high school discovering all kinds of new, old bands for the first time, mostly from the pop-punk genre. Fall Out Boy was one of my favorites, and I can't even begin to tell you how long I spent searching for old demos and obscure recordings from those movie maker styled videos, either with the grainy band photos or lyrics from the song. I found so much old content that no one must have dug up in the years following its upload and attempted to archive as much of it as I could in carefully organized bookmark lists. This was partially to just have the songs on hand in case I wanted to listen to them again, but it was also so I wouldn't lose the link in case I couldn't find them through a YouTube search again. I guess this was my first adventure into lost media four or five years before I was part of the community. However, while I never ended up losing any music from Fall Out Boy, there was another band I did this same thing for at the time but ended up losing a song that I never found again. The band was called New Found Glory, and the song was called My Friends Over You. It's an older tune from one of their first few albums, dating back to the early 2000s. The song was one of their biggest hits, and because of that, there were so many different versions of it out there, from the studio recordings, live albums, and concerts that existed. Similar to what I did with Fall Out Boy, I went out of my way to find all sorts of rare recordings from the band, which is when I found one rendition of My Friends Over You on YouTube that I never heard again. It must have been around 2012 or 2013 when I found the video, and it must have been an official recording, because it didn't sound like a cover, though I can't remember if it was a live performance or a studio recording and I don't think I could tell at the time either. This version of the song was special, because unlike the other ways I had heard it played before, this one had what I believe was a piano solo playing the opening riff. I always remembered it from that intro, and referred to it as the piano version, but haven't been able to find it since that one time, even after having searched for it. Unless the recording came from something official and not a live performance, I'm sure I'll never find it again, since so much time has passed and the channel could be long gone. I don't think the title mentioned anything specifically about the use of a piano in the song, and the image used in the video was a still image, possibly of a drum set or a microphone on stage with a blurry background. It was so long ago, the details are hard to remember, 
but maybe I should try looking for it again. I might have more luck now that my searching skills are much better. Depending on how long you've been watching YouTube for, you might be able to remember the first content you ever saw on the website, and for others, you might have a hard time remembering. It wasn't until my friends told me about how great the site was that I eventually checked it out, having stayed exclusively on Google Videos at the time. This must have been sometime in 2008, and even then, there was so much more variety than anywhere else on the web. I remember my friends sharing some videos with me at the time, most notably Mario bombs blowing up in real life, and various kinds of claymations that we were all into at the time. But I believe my first adventure into YouTube content took the form of Pokemon cards. Around the same time, I had received a single pack of Pokemon cards for Christmas, and it sent me down an obsession that would last for the next several years. And in that time, I discovered lots of Pokemon card YouTubers that I really enjoyed following to see what they'd pull, and to keep up with the newest products. Primetime Pokemon was always one of my favorites, and to this day, I still think he's the king of the genre. But even before I got into his content, there was another channel I found that was really fun to watch. His name was Zack619Shark, and I guess you could call him a Pokemon card YouTuber, where he'd make videos opening packs he got at GameStop, and showing the cards to the camera. His content wasn't filmed very well, and there were other channels like Primetime Pokemon that did this exact same thing more professionally at the time. But it was his style that I and other fans of his enjoyed. He would buy some packs or a tin from the card sets that were available at the time, and really get into the fun of opening packs. It was always cool when he got a nice hollow, but the occasional uber cards were really hype. The Dusknor level X became a recurring moment in his community. Even the common cards were something he'd show interest in, which even back then, wasn't something you saw very often. Several years ago, I had remembered his channel after forgetting it existed, only to check and find out it had been deleted at some point over the years. There's a tribute video that must be almost as old as Zack's channel itself, and also a handful of re-uploads that someone saved. Unfortunately, this is one of those really specific cases of lost media that I think is impossible to search for, and if it wasn't for the couple re-uploads we'd have, even more from his channel would be lost. Unless there are more fans out there that ended up saving his videos. I don't remember his channel being too big, but even to this day, people still remember him, so maybe over time, more will be re-uploaded. No one seems to know what happened to him either, he just deleted his videos and left, but that's not really uncommon for YouTubers in the early days. Zack was literally some random kid that spent some of his money on cards when he found them in stores, and shared what he got on YouTube with his viewers, and that's what it was all about. Fanworks have come a long way since the early days of YouTube, but no matter when you started watching, there's a pretty good chance you've come across some kind of fan-related content before. Nowadays, it's more about meme videos or putting your own spin on something that's already become popular, but back in the day, there was a larger focus on animation and AMVs. Some of the first fan creations I even came across on YouTube were the awesome series of shorts from Ego Raptor that my friends would always watch when we had hangouts, and the ultimate showdown of Ultimate Destiny, which I think was even on Google Video at the time. But another area of content that I would end up finding on my own were fan projects that involved anime openings or clips from the series themselves. When it came to openings, one of the coolest ideas people had were taking the scenes of an opening and changing the characters to fit a certain theme. A couple of my favorites were Full Metal Sonic and Smash Eater, which can still be found today, though I remember they were difficult to find for a while. The other content you'd find involving clips from the anime 
were either original fan-made openings or AMVs like I mentioned before, and sometimes you'd find something really unique. Sometime around the early 2010s, after Toonami had been cancelled by Cartoon Network, I became obsessed with watching anything relating to the block that people had posted on YouTube, which is when I came across something called Death Note Toonami Intro. It was a fan-made video, about 30 seconds long, that edited Death Note clips into the promo format that would be used to introduce shows on Toonami. I knew Death Note had never aired on the block, but it was extremely well edited, and something I enjoyed watching for that fact. It had Light and L talking back and forth to each other, cutting to lines spoken by each character. Light having stated, I am god of this new world, and L having stated, I am L, before stating in unison, I am justice. The only piece of the bumper that I didn't like was the series logo they added at the end, which was just orange text that read Death Note in Arial font. I thought it was really cheesy and ruined the illusion that the promo was real. But I'm sure it still made some people think it was real, and when I first saw it, I probably thought it was real too. This is a piece of lost media I haven't been able to find since around the time I first watched it, around a decade ago. I don't remember what the title was specifically, other than it being some form of Death Note Tsunami promo, and I can't even remember what else the channel had posted, or how many views it had. Unfortunately, since the video itself wasn't really a big deal, and the Tsunami promo idea is so vague, I'm kinda convinced it wasn't saved, and likely doesn't exist anymore. Lots of old anime content from back in the day is long gone, or got hit with copyright strikes over the years. So I'm pretty convinced it'll never resurface, unless I've just been searching for the wrong title. I'm not even sure how long it had been up at the time when I first watched it, but it definitely could have been there for a while, making it even less likely that it survived over the years. If you've been following my channel for a while, then there's a chance you've heard me talk about this topic before, but even if you haven't, this is still a really fun topic to discuss, because it has to do with some early YouTube lore for my channel. I admit that throughout the years, I've deleted a lot of content from my channel, mostly stuff that was uploaded in the late 2000s and early 2010s. This was because around 2015, when I decided to change the direction of my channel from art to video essay, I decided that some of my older content just didn't need to stay up anymore, and instead of making those videos unlisted or private, a lot of them got deleted. While this was a couple years before I heavily got into lost media, it was still a dumb decision that resulted in a lot of content I've never been able to find. Though most of it wasn't too important. I used to make a lot of update videos and discussion videos about certain topics along with my art, and from what I can remember, those are the majority of what's missing, along with some of my very first live streams I ever did, on a now defunct website called Ustream. But one of the most important videos that I still wish I had was my 100 subscriber thank you video. This video itself wasn't anything special as there aren't any funny moments or exclusive content that was only seen in that video, but rather it's an important piece of my channel's history that I wish I could relive. I remember the video well. I had my first camera pointed at the screen of my first computer, which had an image of Cape Mario on it as that was the first channel icon I ever used. There were also sculptures in the corner of the screen, Mario 64 Mario on one side, and Super Sonic from my Sonic the Fighters set on the other, as I felt like those represented the channel well at that point. I think the video was 3 minutes and 51 seconds, and based on some emails I found from my friends, this was filmed in February of 2012. But no matter how much I can recall from the video, there's no way it's still out there. My channel was so small at the time, None of my viewers would have ever thought to download a copy, and even if they had, none of those same people are around anymore. Too much time has passed. 
This is something only I would have, and despite looking everywhere for where I might have left the original file, I can't find it. Something else that I regret doing back then was deleting videos from my computer when I needed more space. So unless it was an animation or a project that took a lot of time to put together, I just got rid of anything that I didn't need, and that 100 subscriber video definitely fits. I didn't get an external hard drive until years later, but I was thinking maybe it made its way over in some old folder I had copied over, but I've searched through the whole thing and it wasn't there. I even went back through old emails with my friends, with the hopes that maybe I had either attached the file, which I think would have been impossible, or even sent them a link to the video, but both of those options came up empty-handed. However, all hope isn't lost yet, because there's still one more place I haven't looked yet, which is ironically lost media itself right now, and that's a flash drive. During this 2012 era, I remember having a black flash drive that I would take back and forth from school when I needed to work on projects at home, and I'm pretty sure I dumped some old YouTube content on there because the flash drive was huge and there was no reason to leave so much space on it. There's a chance I might have transferred some of my video files from my computer to the flash drive if I needed more space, but if the video was already gone from my computer by that time, then it wouldn't have been transferred, and that means it's gone forever. While the majority of my early YouTube content is still around, I wish I had more of these unscripted videos, because I feel like I destroyed a lot of my own history by deleting them. The oldest kind of video like this that's still available is a test video I did showing a clay sculpture from June 2010, and even though the video is so short, it's really fun for me to see this younger version of myself. I even have a vlog from 2011 that I was planning on making into a series at the time, though it never came to be. I remember having filmed some 2010 vlogs as well, so those might be on the flash drive too. I've looked for it before, but I'll have to try again because there could be so much lost content sitting on it that I'd like to archive. To close out this video, and as a little bonus, I'd like to mention a topic that, while I didn't watch it on YouTube back in the day, thousands of people did, and it was a pretty big topic in the lost media community for a while. I've never talked about it before, but I think bringing some more awareness to the topic could help in getting it found. In the late 2000s, there was a video uploaded to YouTube called Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret in which the video claims it'll help you unlock Luigi with the El Real statue in the courtyard, as is common with these types of rumors. The video was noticeably bad quality, having been shot on a handheld camera and put into Movie Maker, where text was added outlining the steps that were required in the game. Essentially, the requirements are nothing more than a distraction, as near the end of the video, the classic car zombie screamer is played, and the video ends. What makes this video so important, and the reason why people searched for it, is that apparently it had become very popular over the years, and was a large piece of YouTube lost media that so many had remembered and couldn't find. There was a big lost media search a couple years ago, which started the on the hunt searches, and lots of progress was made, even having contacted the original creator of the video. It was discovered that the creator deleted the video sometime in 2012, and doesn't have a copy anymore, which led the community to search for re-uploads. While we didn't find a full re-uploaded video, we did end up discovering a very small portion of it can be seen in a reaction video someone recorded back in the day. This is pretty big because it's the real original video being played on a computer screen, and it's the closest we have to getting a copy. Marvel, who started the search, did a fantastic video series documenting the topic, so if you'd like more in-depth information, check out those videos. But what this search comes down to, similar to all YouTube Lost Media, is someone who downloaded the video and still has it. Since this screamer in particular was so popular, and so many people remembered it, 
There's a theory that someone would have saved themselves a copy given the number of people that viewed it or reposted it. It's a little disappointing that the ways of acquiring old YouTube videos are so difficult because it doesn't leave a lot of options open for actually finding the content, especially when it comes to older or less popular videos that fewer people would have. However, in the same way, it makes finding them that much more interesting, and it gets people thinking about the old days of YouTube and the internet in a way that maybe they hadn't before. If you have any stories or memories with old YouTube content that's gone missing, comment it down below because I'd definitely love to read more stories like that. I certainly didn't think this much about any of those old videos before now, but it's cool to go back and remember what used to be around as well as bring more awareness to media preservation. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other game-related Lost Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.